pray with singing a lot. It's really a big part of my spirituality. And so oftentimes when I do things like I used to, I was on the road for about five or six years after I got out of prison trying to explain to people what to do about, you know, when you are getting around some guy that seems too good to be true or some woman that seems too good to be true. It's like they probably are. They're probably an FBI agent or uh, an informant. And um, so I was trying to bring that out so that people could become, like people go, well, what do you do? Can't you, trust, you can't trust anybody. I go, well, you can trust yourself if you learn how to do that. And that means getting into a spiritual life of some sort. I mean, a practice, sitting down and praying or, or meditating every day or something like that. So one of the things that I love is this book, uh, this song that was written by Kate Wolf. It's called The Medicine Wheel Song. And she wrote it. She wrote it in a different order. And this woman named Brooke Medicine Eagle took it and made it into her song as well and changed the order of it. Um, Brooke Medicine Eagle spent a lot of time traveling around the country. She's Matisse. She's a um, Scott Arapaho. So um, she's an amazing soul, and she kind of connects the two worlds very well. She had uh, hoop circles for years, and I went to them, and she's an amazing lady. So this was the song that she took on, and so I used this one a lot. And it's a great song in the morning. I sang this every day when I was in prison in the morning. <clears throat> when the morning breaks and the sunlight warms my soul, In the east, the eagle flies and the red tail proudly soars. I'm on my way to the place of the spirit one. Grandfather, hear me now. I'm on fire. Let the sun dance take my feet to your desire. Show me visions for my eyes. Donning gold shimmers in the sky.
my dreams write crystal magic medicine. I There were some young kids that wanted to lock down on the. Oh, we were. It was, this is still a Mount Graham issue, and um, one of the senators. Uh, but anyways, he was. We had, he had an office in Tucson, and so we were going to go and occupy his office. And that day was going to be a day when they were having a town hall somewhere where they were going to film it, it was going to be on the news, and there was going to be all these people there, and he was going to talk about Mountain Graham and all that kind of stuff. So, he was, um, he was at his office, we went in, um, there was, uh, I parked my, my truck, uh, I had a friend of mine who's a, an, a musician, and most of what I, I sing a lot when I'm at demonstrations and stuff, and so, um, so my musician friend and I were going to go, his name is Dave Case Neal, I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he's an amazing musician. And, um, and he and I were driving together, and I parked my truck in this church parking lot, it was empty, and we show up at this place, and these kids, they're 19 and such, and they're going to lock down on his desk. And so I was like, okay, well, that'll work. And so they're locked down on the desk, and there's other people around them that were their support people and all that kind of stuff. And they were bound and determined to get arrested. And I'm like, well, you might have your chance today because there's a whole bunch of riot cops out there and they got the shields and guns and all that. So um, they locked down. We were inside the office. I was on the desk singing songs. And um, because the people were yelling really uh, incendiary things like, say, out crap, say, out crap. And, and it was really, jangly and kind of nasty and everybody's mad and all that kind of stuff. And the feds really like that because they want you to hit the wall. They want to hit you back. So I came in and I said, oh, this is not going to do So I got on the desk and I started singing. My gram is worth saving. My gram is worth saving. My gram is worth saving. We are sacred land. So I started doing that. Got a couple of people to do some harmony with me. I had a couple of girls that started dancing with me. I had somebody over there with a drum started drumming. And so we turned it into a dance and a celebration. And we were using rhythm and we were having a good time and we were smiling. And it changed the energy completely. Now when I go to demonstrations now, if I do, 
I usually bring a tobacco pipe. And when I see somebody apoplectic over there because they're so pissed off and they want to get their head beaten in by the cops, <laughs> and, ask myself over there, and I ask them to take a hit of this tobacco with me. Tobacco is a very sacred herb that the people that lived here before us whiteies came in used to connect them to the Great Spirit. So when I do that, it is strategic. So what I want people to do, because you're getting apoplectic, you're usually stop breathing, you get, or you're going to do some hyperventilating. Calm yourself down. Learn how to do that in chaotic situations, because you want to be aware of what you need to do next. So when you get into a big situation where there's lots of craziness, and, and get with people that are going to be that way with you. That's why the, the, um, the Reclaiming Collective, and if you go into any of these big demos, you're going to see a bunch of pagans out there, and they are having a party. And they are totally, usually don't get touched by anybody. Why? Because they are using magic. And it's about moving energy. And it's about being aware of that. So what I'm telling you is to start working on the invisible end of it. Start working on your attitude. Start working on, on being calm and connecting yourself to the planet. Because it is disgusting what's going on with fracking. And it is killing what's going on with fracking. And we have to, we cannot fight fire with fire. We can't. They'll, they'll beat us up. They have all the guns. So we cannot fight fire with fire. We have to fight with love. And that is so counterintuitive. But that's what, that was my big message when I got out. So it's, it's something that, it's a discipline that you get to do for yourself. Get involved in some martial art. Get involved in some way where you start becoming, or be, in dance, or anything. But some way, and I, I get where you're coming from, believe me, I was there. I spent most of my life being rebellious. And I still am. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and I want, to, I want to hear about stuff that's successfully stopping fracking. Not about some kid that just got the shit beat out of him because he got mad when he was at a demo. And so these kids are locked on. The riot cops are gathering. They happen to be doing their staging at the damn parking lot my freaking truck was parked at. And I'm, I'm going, oh shit. And they were coming in for blood. They wanted to just butt heads and bang heads. And they were ready to do that. And so we had a bunch of hippies out there. And we had some people that were mad. And they were locked on. We had these young kids that were locked onto the desk. And I was like, you know what, you guys? I think it would really be a strategic good idea if you guys would unlock now go to the town hall meeting where there's going to be media, where nobody can hurt you, because when the media is running, they're not going to be taking pictures of, and locked down there. And we could have done it. This was still in the 90s. This is not you know, now. So I don't know what the strategy would be for you now, but I'm just giving you an example. And so I couldn't talk them out of it. And I was inside, and there was one little cop that just because he saw me come in and change the energy, and he knew that he wanted my blood. So um, he was very pissed off. He was about this big, he was about this wide. And he was like, Arr! and he started running after me. And, um, and I saw the riot cops were coming, and I went, man, if I get caught, I'm going to prison again, so I'm not going to get caught. So um, my friend Dwight Metzger is 6'3", and he's about, he's not fat, but he's big. And he was standing. He saw what was going on, and, and, and Casey had come in with his guitar, and we were playing music, and we had the drummers going, and I had the black cops over there. They were dancing and all this kind of stuff, because we had a, a really nice thing going. And then um, these, the riot cops started coming in. I said, well, i got to get the heck out of here. And that little guy saw me leave, so he started chasing me. And then I got behind him, because he kind of lost me, and I started mimicking him, and of course, People were freaking out because they thought I was really going to get in trouble. But anyways, I got away from him. He turned around and started chasing me. I went across the street, and Dwight walked right in front of me, and he went boom right into him. He goes, don't chase her. She's a personal friend of mine. And since he was about this big, um, and 
Dwight's this big, um, the cops just went and converged on him. I got across the street, I went to my, my truck in the middle of the parking lot with all the cops in it, and I got in it and drove away. Um, but it's, it's really important. Those kids could have done a, a lot more strategic stuff. They ended up going to jail and getting bumped on and all kinds of crap. So um, Dwight ended up going to jail too. And they did. What They went out in the street and they just grabbed random kids and threw them in jail. So I, they didn't get me. So I'm totally grateful, but I don't know if that helps. No, so, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, totally. So it's very really nice. about walking with purpose and center and, and really connecting yourself. However you find your higher power, whatever it is you want to focus on. Well, I'm extraordinarily perplexed by the incredible war on predators uh, oh, in our country. Yeah, all the way through the Midwest and down into your neck of the woods. I know, I don't and and uh, I, there's so many good people working to try to salvage older policies that were more sensible. Yeah. And we're just driving every form of animal life that's not a cow. Yeah. out of existence, I and yeah. I am stymied. I really don't know. Rod Coronado, that's his campaign right now, is the, is the predator. So when he comes here, you get with him because he will give you some on-the-ground stuff okay. that you can do, and he is a very powerful, powerful warrior, really powerful. So he's the guy. Um, I'm not involved in any campaigns mm -hmm. right now, except I'm supporting campaigns. But I'm, I'm not an organizer. I'm a cheerleader. Um, I do the bra bra sis boomba kind of thing. And, um, and so that's, that's my role. And Rod is an organizer, which is why I hate him so much, because he's so good at what he does. So, others? Sir? I'm just going to point out that uh, Peg mentioned this booklet that we have up here. It's about her past, and um, there's a great interview with her in here, it's a little story, kind of, or a version of the story, and uh, we're giving them out tonight, and she's going to be cool enough to sign them, so I'm going to stop by the table afterwards. Yeah, great. Okay. So, right. the other thing, real quick, um, some of you probably already seen these uh, postcards, there's a campaign, oh, yes. the Move Marie campaign, Marie Mason is a political prisoner, and someone asked about Danny McGowan earlier. Daniel's trying to get a lot of attention on Marie's case right now, redirect the attention from his case on Marie's. She's doing uh, over 20 years um, in a federal penitentiary in Texas right now for Earth Liberation Fund activity, including an arson of a Monsanto genetic engineering experiment, um, which uh, got a lot of attention back on um, New Year's of 1999, New Year's of 2000. And um, she is in like the most restrictive prison for women right now. Again, she's classified for medium security. She's had no disciplinary type of actions in the prison, but they're sticking her in a super restricted prison for women down in Florida um, to shut her up. And um, so this campaign, and there's also these brochures up here that talk about her whole case and everything. So grab one of these. With this postcard you can mail in, just sign and mail in. It's, it's just <coughs> encouraging the federal prison authorities to relocate her to a more appropriate facility. Uh, she's a personal friend and a great, awesome person and does not deserve to be tortured and nobody does. Um, she should, actually, she should be free. Right? She didn't do anything wrong, but she should get some kind of wonderful reward for what she did as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but I just wanted to mention those things. Um, and I want to just thank these guys for bringing me out here because um, what they're doing is really, really important is, to, is connecting the dots because there's so many different campaigns of people out there doing work. Um, that's that's to to make the world a better place for all of us, and and um, it's wonderful to see that happening with just people like you that want to get involved with one thing can get connected to that kind of stuff, and it's just so important. And I just am so grateful to Leslie and and Nathan and, and everybody that's been bringing me in. So thanks so much for all to be here. <laughs>